So I'm Tanya, Tanya Ciora, and uh, now actually I'm in Athens these days, mm -hmm. but I'm based in Brussels, and um, my business, Pilates Tanya Ciora, is in Brussels, Belgium. Amazing. So it's still running Since there? Since last Brussels? year. Yeah, so it's still running there, but you're in Greece right now. Yes, only these days, yes, okay. indeed. Yes. Yeah, with a great weather here, 41 degrees in Brussels, uh, 13. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wise choice. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, and now, and your studio's new too, right? Like you just, just recently opened yeah, it? Yeah, indeed. Okay. okay. Yeah. So actually, really recently, it was the 9th of June. I'm laughing because I started actually, uh, of course, uh, setting it up and renting the space in... Uh, back in October, and uh, I mean, uh, due to the situation and Belgian authorities, uh, we opened only on the 9th of June, so uh, it was one, and a, one month and a half really to work in presence, yes. and also at the same time with online, and, uh, and then back in the uh, end of uh, August. So now, are you, how long, you were living in Brussels for a while first, and that's where, as opposed to Greece, and that's why? Yes, actually, uh, it was uh, back in 2009 when I arrived in Brussels, after okay. also studying in France, because I studied uh, political science and human rights, uh, my first studies, uh, when I was 18, and then I worked on human rights uh, for six years, and after the fourth year, I I started studying Pilates, and it was super interesting what you said and super inspiring about uh, the flag and uh, your meeting with all people and the 1st of August, what is in Canada, because actually uh, my previous work was a lot about anti-discrimination and uh, a lot uh, indeed, and uh, I was working on disability rights. Uh, so rights of persons with disabilities yes. and we have in um, in Europe we have actually you know um, of course also we have in the world like common days but we have uh, we celebrate the European Day of Persons with Disabilities in December okay. um, you know we celebrate the European Day against racism etc so it is it is super inspiring to to see that how diversity uh, can work more and how uh, it can become on the on the top of the surface yes. and how we can move more forward you know in our daily life and and this actually uh, can help us more whatever job we do yes. to um, I mean to see this picture you know it's not only because you work on human rights or because uh, you are a Pilates teacher and how you you include everything in your life and you have more a more inclusive society mm -hmm. um yeah inclusiveness actually you know yes. inclusive society and That's for me it's important yeah absolutely and i think of when i you know, i just did that whole thing about the city of mississauga and uh and, and for the city i i've seen how they have like in their bylaws everything has to be accessible right so it's part of their mandate that when you're building somewhere now it has to have ramps, it has to have a certain incline, it has to have, um, you know, all these things that make it accessible. And that if you're building a new building now, they won't give you your permits unless it's accessible. So, Indeed. Yeah. Right? And, and that's the work that you were doing like, to advocate for those things so that it gets to a place where it's, it's part of the fabric of building and infrastructure and, and now we don't think about it like you just you just can't get a building code without those things being compliant so that's the work and i, I like seeing that because that's how the work works right like you get to mm -hmm. that place where it is now this is part of our our yeah. culture yeah indeed and you know when i started actually searching for a place i wanted to to have everything accessible mm -hmm. uh i mean for everybody you know yes otherwise i wouldn't i wouldn't think so it was through my previous uh job and by crown that i thought about it uh, yes. you know a lot yes I, I yeah i i do think about that because you know we have this, all these conversations about even like privilege right and we want to put mm. We want to put this tag of white privilege on it and just be like, you know, always like shaking the finger. 
But privilege can look like so many different things. And an example of that would be, let's say I go into a Starbucks or a coffee shop and I just, you know, step up and then walk in, order my coffee and walk out. And I never think once that there's three steps that I had to go up to walk into that Starbucks. Whereas someone, mm-hmm. someone who's in a wheelchair, they look at that and like, exactly. I, can't, I can't buy a coffee today because I can't get up those stairs to go in. That's uh, my and mobility and privilege. I just didn't even think about completely unconscious yes. of my privilege. Yeah, privilege. most of people actually uh, do not think. It's, uh, it's normal. We don't, uh, well, it's normal, it shouldn't be, but it's not in our education, you know. Some were like uh, speaking a lot about... Uh, uh, inclusiveness and disability. Disability is not only physical, you know, it's intellectual, uh, mental disability, yes. uh, you know, deaf people, uh, blind people. So it's everybody. Uh, and we don't think about it, indeed. Right. There's the, uh, a post that a friend of mine put up this morning and said that mental health, I love the fact that you brought that up, mental wellness, it's not a physical disability that is like, oh, I see your arms broken, poor you. Mm-hmm. I, could be, I just, I could be in a mind space. And it said something to the effect of people with mental illness aren't faking sick. Most of the time they are faking help. Yeah, indeed. Yes. And I was that's like, true. Even, that's, that's even true. statistically wise, yes, it is true. It is true. Yeah. You know, you... It's it's not easy, you know, for somebody to accept that um, has a mental, um, I mean, mental issue. If you don't want to call it, some people they they don't like to call it disability. Yes. Uh, so you know, but at the same time, if uh, you don't accept it and uh, you don't uh, like say it. Uh, then it's not it's going to stay and even if it's going to stay that something can stay it is okay then also it's how you interact with people and how you go to your uh, to work and how you you go out or you you know you speak with your friends uh, you speak with your family you know it's everything absolutely yeah when uh, uh, when people talk about like trauma informed um approaches and things along those nature and they start to layer that into our teaching we start to understand the value of asking simple questions like how are you you know Mm -hmm. when someone comes into a class and actually not just how are you but actually stop and listen to their answer right you know and like yes let them hey and and let that determine what's where are they at on this spectrum of mental health and wellness Mm -hmm. and being present or not being present today and and as much as I want to yes. get through the order and I want to get to somewhere in the work today it might just be a conversation today it might just be stretching today it might you know what I mean like depending on what the person needs yeah. so just really giving yeah, space yeah. for that mental wellness as much as a physical disability and mm-hmm. making accommodations what I'm looking for like trying to find that accommodation for people wherever they're at right yes Indeed, indeed, and and indeed, you know, Pilates is awesome because I mean, it uh, it combines both the physical and the mental part of uh, of a of a body and mind, and and I love it. You know, it's like how your body, as you practice, can bring you into a men- mental state where you will feel like. Of course, through endorphins and everything what happens, yes. uh, and you feel great, you feel like uh, like you are you have a renovation in your body, and then at the same time, like when you work that sometimes okay, of course it is focus, it is concentration a lot, mm-hmm. like what happens into your body and yeah. this connection i I love it, I love it really i do I do too, and for those who are watching, I know like Joel and Emmett and there's there's like Tara for example, are some people who've seen a lot of these. And I, I don't know about for them, but for me, I never get tired of hearing people say how much they love Pilates, how much it changes their <laughs> life, how much it can change yes. someone else's life, how yes. much you, know, you can go in feeling terrible and then you walk out feeling awesome. Like, the same here, same here. Yeah. Uh, you could just say that over and over and over again, and I'll just be like, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, really, really. It's awesome. Yes. So, 
So I met him uh, like uh, two years ago in uh, at uh, Uno in Portugal. Oh, did you? Where Jay Grimes and Sandy they came. Yes, yes, great. Yeah, all excellent teachers, right? I I love um, just seeing. Them. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God! We had a workshop, like a, a short workshop about hands-on. Okay. You know, yes. like without speaking at all. You know mm -hmm. these things, these little things, and it was amazing. Like how you can work only, you know, but by touching the person, the client, mm -hmm. and changing, you know, this little thing, and then it changes uh, its practice. Mm -hmm. And I love hands-on, really. It's uh, yes. one of the things that I missed during, uh, of course, COVID and oh, giving yes. only online for several months that I, I really appreciate online also. Um, it was hands-on, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm a really touchy person, like I'm Greek and you know, I'm, when I speak, I use my hands, I move a lot. Now, I, at the beginning, I'm telling you that I, I struggled when you invited me not to move because I want to move a lot, you know, oh, when yeah. I speak and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you see me, my hands how I'm like going to stay way. without, you know, the hands. <laughs> Are you so, you know, for right me, now, just to... Uh... Uh, yeah, I, at the beginning, at the yeah. beginning, yes, I had my hands under my thighs, yeah, seriously. <laughs> but now it's okay. I can, I okay. can start, you know, speaking. Yes. <laughs> That's I couldn't so, hear you before. Hands you on. Hands under his eyes. <laughs> so hands on for me, uh, it's what I missed really. Like one of the most uh, the the things that I I'm, I missed mostly, it was hands on. You know. Mm. Um, I'm really grateful now that we have this back and we hope that we will have it forever yes. and ever. <laughs> <laughs> Tara Rose says, yes, hands on when you, yes, for using hands when you speak. My family is Italian. I do the same. <laughs> yes, it's the Mediterranean way. It's really, it's really not easy to, you know, to hold your, your hands, you know, right. really on your thighs. Yes. <laughs> Nice. Um, so how did you find, see my hands going already, um, how did you find Pilates? We talk about this all the time. Like, I mean, like, what was your first experience with Pilates? Yes, actually my, my previous uh, job uh, found my, my new one because uh, we had, uh, during lunch times, we had some days that we could take a break and do an activity. And there was a Pilates, uh, there was a room where they were giving people Pilates, yoga, and I was like, oh, I'm going to try it back in 2013. And I was like, I want to try Pilates. Uh, and, uh, and I tried, I really liked it, I continue. Then I found also a uh, place, you know, studio, gym, uh, Pilates, it was uh, collective uh, classes uh, when I joined. And then in 2014, I started studying, I found a private school, uh, then I found another one because I, I wanted to go deeper. At that moment, I didn't think that I'm going to change job, okay? It was not like I woke up one day and I said, I'm going to become Pilates teacher. No, it didn't come like this for me, at right. least. And then it, uh, it came like this. And then I wanted really to go really deep to the method and I was always feeling that there is something that I wanted to learn more. And uh, back in 2016, I met uh, Miguel, Miguel Silva and uh, Fabienne. And uh, when they announced that they will have an intensive course, I applied and, uh, and I was in, I was super glad. It was a great experience. I feel so, so, so grateful, really, really. Yes, that's amazing. Well, so what was it about like your first class that made you say like, I need more of this in my body. It was uh, it was a thing that uh, I was I felt that I'm going to I'm using my whole body, mm -hmm. but in a different way that before I didn't know. You know because I yeah. did I was doing gymnastics for nine years when I started when I was four. And then dances, uh, you know, Greek dances, some modern dances, and I never felt my body like this. So for like me, it was. Or that feel like. Yes, good. that. 
It was not the, it was I, I was feeling with gymnastics uh, you know challenged a lot and really good but it was something deeper it was something that you know was going somewhere more that mm-hmm. I never felt before and I was super curious and I was like what is this like pilates what what is it you know what is pilates yes uh because before i was doing yoga so i started first with uh, with yoga years ago and i was doing yoga i mean for several years but i, I had no idea about uh, pilates I, i i hadn't tried until yeah. 2013 right yeah is this funny I, I, when I when okay. did you when did you start uh, when was your first class on pilates when was your first um, class i i think i have i have almost like two firsts so the the first first was when I was playing football and over the summers I was at a, cl- a gym and I was having you know chronic injuries with my back and going to a chiro and I went to this Pilates class and I realized that it was it felt really good in my body and my back felt good afterwards and I started mm. I, and I kept going back to this class and the more I was going to this Pilates class the less that I had to go to the chiropractor right so that was a sense of it was almost like this trade off in my head like if if i could do this prehab thing i don't have to go for rehab all the time so that was kind yeah. of you know that's kind of how i thought of it then and then fast forward a few years and then i was in uh working at lifetime and mm-hmm. a friend of mine uh, kelsey was teaching this class plotties for athletes or plies for men i think it was just plies for athletes i'm like ah oh, i'm an athlete i'll take this class and it crushed me it kicked my butt so badly and i we were, yeah. doing, we were doing exercises and i it was like some, some contemporary exercise that was engaging my psoas and i could not do it on one side of my body i i could not move the reformer mm. whatsoever and i remember that sense of just confusion like i why can't i do this and i walked out of that class like that only today and i'm going to own this practice i i, I was like determined to just like own plies mm. and it owned me that day. So that's when I started I took a course, I took another course, I did my apprenticeship and I same thing. I got deeper yeah. and deeper and deeper because it 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 beat me up and I and I I didn't want to get beat up like that again. So, so that was that's really how I found it. Yes, it's uh, it's really awesome. And what what I also like is that you know, it's not an ending story like you learn something and then I don't know, it's you you have learned and that's it you you learn every day you know to also to become better to to give more to yourself to to apply it to give to your clients and and also actually to feel better during the day and live better it's not only you know to live better it's not only okay it's my work yes. it finished and and then i'm i don't know i have my my habits or old habits actually if you really if you really do it i uh, i think and i believe that you you feel better also during your daily and personal life it's not only okay i finish my job and that's it for today that's it for the weekend right i agree with that i, I i've talked about doing well i've talked on i've done like you know, pres- presentations and corporations and we talk about how plies helps mm. you in the boardroom right your your sense of posture and all these different things uh and we said the locker room like in your sports and all those different things as well mm. and then also in the bedroom right like your confidence and your sexual Indeed. health right so and it it just crosses over into all those different areas and it goes beyond just getting better at plies yes it's your whole life and when i was um i read also you know the the book i mean one of the books on pilates it was uh, last year uh, you know uh, steel's book it was the yes. the Harris, king yeah. the cage the lion yes, yes. Uh, and it was about also the you know uh, sexual life you know what uh, joseph, joseph pilates also wanted you know mm-hmm. to that people feel and improving their life yes. because it's kind of uh, taboo right we don't uh, we don't speak about sexual life or you know if it is important sometimes uh, it might feel that okay after some years in a relationship you know it doesn't matter or after a marriage right or with kids right 
but yeah, it matters. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know yeah. it matters. <laughs> Absolutely, it's good that you mentioned like with kids too, right? Because like the different stages that that we go through as a family, where everything else becomes priority, and then you drop off yourself as one of those priorities. So kids come in the way, you know, earning money for a job come in the way, all those different things. So then that whole yeah. intimacy component is dropped off because other things are so much more important. Mm -hmm. Right. So actually we forget ourselves. Uh, like when you have a goal and uh, like you, you have a priority, as you said, and you focus too much in a specific area and then the rest, uh, you know, can stay aside, but actually it's how to learn to, uh, not to do just okay you do your thing well even yes. if it is your job but then you don't leave also other things other people your people you love uh to, like to the side you know right nothing for granted you know? yes do you pause there hopefully it's doesn't cut out completely Hi, Lisa. Any comments? Anyone? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. We'll get her back in. Yeah. So that's exactly what we we're just talking about, like sexual health and Pilates. Like how I've had Brenda Freeman on, uh, and we talked at length about that. We did a plot. Maybe it's time to do the Pilates after dark. We haven't done that in a, a long time. Let's talk about that because it's an interesting conversation because it will from a male perspective as well, right? Like, I mean, like, men's sexual health is, is something that is talked about very, very rarely. For my male applies instructors or guys who are still in there, yes. It's, yeah, I was going to say, how much do you talk about that? How, how often does that come up for you in conversation with your male clients? I mean, it's one thing to have a conversation with women, but let's uh, see what happens with that. Bring Tanya back in. Yes. Hi. Are we back? We're back. Actually, clear now. Yes. Too. You see, I was just saying that I have, I take nothing for granted, and actually, the internet connection, I I won't take it also for granted. Yes. <laughs> because you see, <laughs> when you make something, it works. Yes. It's great. You know, it's okay. Right. So I was saying that I I don't take anything for granted. Like you know, it's. It's not taking for granted, ah, you know, your job is like this. You, I mean, we don't have a standard salary. And don't take for granted your friends. Don't take for granted something. Somebody was saying, speak more about sex. Don't yes. take for granted sex, okay? Yes. Don't take for granted your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Um, I mean, you know, enjoy every moment, every day. That's what COVID, yeah. one of the things taught us, <laughs> it was really the right to enjoy every day yes yes exactly uh joel's saying that he does not leave with that when you have a new client We're, while you're uh, out there i was asking the question like for the male instructors in in the chat have you had any conversations about sexual health with your men you talk about taboo on top of taboo yes and that's probably as taboo as it gets right uh, it is taboo, but you mean like like if you want to speak about it, or what what do you mean yeah. exactly? Well, yeah, exactly. If you want to speak about it, like I mean, it's uh, um, in that sense of well, maybe you should try and see what happens. <laughs> These guys. Well, that's that's the thing. Like, I mean, how do you how do you weave that into the conversation? Because there's so many other areas that we we delve into in your conversation with people during. A session. They talk about work. They talk about stress. They talk about life. They talk about their job, their new car, how much money they make. Well, we don't touch that topic, but that is so central to who we are, and is so enhanced by our Pilates work. But we just leave it alone. Well, indeed. I mean, it is um, okay. Here, it is a thin line. Of course, you don't want to start the session, you know, by asking, uh, like, is right. your sex life good or 
Do you want right. to improve it, right? Right. I mean, <laughs> there is an intimacy, uh, but sometimes, I don't know, sometimes you might feel it, right? Uh, it's not that you have to ask about everything, but sometimes it's, uh, I don't know, it's also, it's also a feeling, like also, and it has to do with physical uh, things. I mean, you know, with, I don't know, like, it has to do also with some connections in the body when you see yes. through the exercises, like, I don't know, from the inner thighs for the pelvic floor muscles uh, yes. to women is more... Uh, obvious let's say mm -hmm. uh so it's not also it's not that you have to ask about it i mean it's not that i i do it like it's not i don't have a taboo but at the same time it is intimate to yes. ask about this yes yes absolutely it's but of um... course if a client asks me or uh tells me that you know i would like does it improve like sexual life i mean yes they have asked me i was asked mostly by women mm -hmm. um i don't know maybe it's it's easier you know woman to woman i don't know uh, mm -hmm. to ask right uh so yes of course i reply and uh, <laughs> and i explain yeah seriously and yes. and, and i believe it You're right i'm just reading the comments <laughs> joel and Emmett are just going on about let's do a marketing experiment post covid research we could exaggerate probably make a ton of money i just hope no one asks for a demo <laughs> And uh, and I have to say too, when when Brenda was on and we were talking about Pilates and sex, we did our whole like we did like a ninety minute conversation around it, and she talked about um, sexual health and and just like pelvic floor muscles and and all these different things. By the time she was done, she does such a good job of talking about its connection with Pilates that I went into almost every client after that and just look at the way their body moves and we're like, hmm, I wonder. <laughs> like, wonder, like it's just like your mind goes there with everyone afterwards because you start looking for cues that their body's telling you even when you're not asking the question yes yes true uh, so, true yes so it's so funny i was just like it's, after it's interesting though i didn't know that you had this uh 90 mm -hmm. minutes i would i would definitely enjoy all right <laughs> yeah I'll, i'll send you the link we did yeah. I think we've done two of them Yeah, it's it's time to have it's have to. What have Joe says, and he's right. Yeah, for real, working your center helps with all of that. Indeed, indeed. Because even if we when we speak about anatomically, okay, I don't mm -hmm. speak much anatomically, though I studied anatomy. Uh, indeed, pelvic floor muscles. What is is part of our center, right? Yes. Inner thighs is part of our center, right? Right. So yes, uh, if our center works and is getting you know improved mm -hmm. and the client feels then uh, then you know it works it's uh yeah it's much better yeah you could do a survey you could do like a, just an anonymous survey and just gotta get get some feedback get some testimonials out of it It'd be worth it yeah there It'd you go good. you can have good. like that could just be your whole niche for your whole studio like then you could just make that your whole thing Well, I don't want to have just, you know, one thing. Yes. It's not a bad idea in general, but I don't want to have a specific thing, you know, like mm -hmm. this is better. And in general, not only about Pilates, because then again, you see, uh, we, we move, you know, out of the diversity thing or the inclusiveness. Yes. And what right. is Pilates about? You know, Pilates yeah. is really for all and... Uh, It's about, you know, to, it's a lifestyle, it's a workout, it's a lifestyle, it's really the whole body workout. Yes. And so, you, indeed. You, you brought that back very nicely to a very, like, serious topic again, so thank you. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I was going to say, too, like, we were talking earlier about, like, the, your entire life, like, how do you... Make, you know, so can you just talk a little bit more about that? Because I like the way that you said that about do, doing it, doing everything with your entire life. Like, so just like, can you yeah. explain a little more? So actually, your entire, your entire you, your life mm -hmm. um, is like when I started, uh, when I decided to, to change, uh, to do my career change, okay? Yes. And I was like, I want to go for it. It took me some years, of course, to do yeah. this transition. It didn't take one week. 
And I was like, you know, I'm going for, for I'm going for it, and it's I'm going to use my whole like mind and my whole myself to do it. Yes. Because you know, if you are not sure of something, I mean, until you take a decision, you might not be sure, right? You might, of course, you will think, should I go for it or should I do that or to whom should I speak? But once you decide, at least for me, I knew that I'm going to to do everything to go for it. You yes. know, I knew that I have to spend a lot of energy, time. I knew that I'm going to have by the end of the, these efforts, like few but good people next to me because yeah. for years I had to work and to study at the same time and teach at the same time. So I was yeah, doing, like my free time was, my free time was Pilates, studying yes. and teaching. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a free time. So I was not really, I was not going out. I didn't have the time, you know. Right. Uh, so I said, this is the challenge. And I really want it. And because I like to be challenged, indeed. Yes. Then I decided, okay, it's myself. It's the entire who I am. Mm -hmm. And I accept, you know, I accept my weaknesses and my strengths. That's why the entire you, yes. actually where it goes, the entire you, like you accept like you are who you are. You're unique, right? Yes. And it's not about comparing yourself with other people um, because you know sometimes we compare too much ourselves with with another person or we hear too much and we are influenced by somebody who will tell us oh you know don't change job don't do that or you know it will Be take safe. you like you know and you have to listen to yourself a lot yes so it's not the easy way what I did and what some people uh, do but if you feel your uniqueness, then uh, I'm sure that, you know, people can go for what they want. Well said. I agree. And the entire you piece really resonates with me because it's easy to half-heartedly step into it. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of dip your toe in and decide, okay, that's not for me. Or you can just really go for it. And when it gets hard because you made that decision, you continue to push through to the other side of that hard thing as opposed to just giving up as soon as it gets easy because you're not really fully into it. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah. And comparing my, uh, yourself, like, it doesn't mean that because I, I have people uh, that I admire a lot, mm -hmm. you know, teachers yeah. also, my teachers, when they teach me weekly or monthly, because of course I take classes with teachers, yeah. what I admire. It's not like comparing, it's not the same. It's people that you admire and, you know, you want to be next to them. Yeah. And at the same time, it's not comparison because even if you compare yourself with other teachers, with, uh, I don't know, other people, you won't do the same work or you can't be the you same as they are. Yes, yeah, exactly. You can't. Even if you try, you know, like you can't. And that's why also sometimes we say, okay, uh, of course, I, I teach now the last year's classical Pilates, but you will see also the difference of teaching, right? Yeah. It's not like everybody teaches the same way. Right. So, yeah. But th this is also the beauty, right? That's absolutely the beauty. Because, I mean, we could be teaching the exact same class, same exercises in the exact same order, but we see some different things. We have different points of emphasis. We have different words, different verbal cues, different tactile cues. Like the whole experience is different, but the exercise is the same. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so even that's why I say in the personal training world, personal training is personal. Someone may just simply like me and choose to train with me. And then someone may choose that they don't like me and then they train with someone else. And, and I've seen that in the past where someone would sign up for sessions with me and then the four sessions are done and, you, and they say, okay, we're, we're done. And you see them training with someone else. And you're like, okay, well, good for you. You found someone that works with you, that inspires you and you're continuing on your fitness journey. So that's the win. So it's not about, it's not about me trying to be like that person to win them back. It's about them doing them well. Super interesting you. what you yeah. said. I'm really glad that you mentioned this because, um, you know, people, they ask me like, uh, 
how do you know that the client will continue or I mean the sessions, you know, Pilates yes. with Renew you. the sessions, yeah. And how you know, how do you how do you know that? And actually I don't know sometimes from the first class or the second, but I really feel that there is on the third, fourth or fifth class for me at yes. least. Uh, I give privates only and I really feel, you know, if we have the connection or if I can really transmit, um, you know, to help really to, to also to progress and if he, he will get it from me, Pilates. And, uh, and I'm glad, but sometimes it's difficult, you know, to, to know that or you can't really ha get the connection with this client Yes. Or that you have to accept that, you know, it's better to work with another teacher. You know, it's, I can't have everybody, mm. right? Uh, so it's okay. Yeah. And then you, you suggest another teacher or maybe the person does not want only Pilates and wants something else. I don't know, like uh, yoga, tennis, uh, basketball. Uh, I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you, uh, in Brussels, are you connected with other Pilates studios or instructors in your area that you, you work with? Uh, it's not that I work with, I don't collaborate with, but I have um, from previous uh, studios where I worked, I, I know the teachers, some of the teachers, and I, I keep a very good contact and uh, with few, with them, uh, we are friends and I can recommend to somebody if they ask yes. me also for collective classes. I have, uh, I mean, good recommendations to, to say to somebody Perfect. where to go or, yes. you know, to, to find another person. Yes, I have. And I'm really glad to, to share uh, because, uh, you know, the more Pilates is coming on, uh, then, you know, there are enough people, there are enough clients for everybody. We are in Brussels, more than one million uh, inhabitants. Yes. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, we have like five or six minutes left, but what's next for your studio? Well, I know it goes fast, right? <laughs> it goes super fast. <laughs> what's next? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the next is that I hope I'm going, to, we are going to continue with our sessions in person. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's the next, and that's the after next, and later on, if everything goes on, after this year, because we had a difficult year, yes. let's hope not to have a more difficult one. Yes. Uh, I want to, to have, uh, I, I really, my goal is to have workshops in Brussels, you know, to invite teachers, yes. and to, to bring, you know, this spirit of Pilates community, and, uh, you know, sharing is, uh, um, is caring. So you want to, to share what you know. Uh, and from, P from Pilates teachers, I know already. I will find out more. And, uh, and I want to bring them in, uh, in Brussels, like in the heart of uh, Europe. Yes. Nice. One day you will be part of my tour. <laughs> like, got so yes. many friends. I got, I'm looking forward to visit with Miguel and, and others in Spain and like uh, we, my wife's like we gotta go we have to meet all these people like yes so, yeah so we'll make you should call it Europe within uh, two months take 40 45 or even 60 days if possible yes, yes. it would be great really and just like map them out just pinpoint all the different studios yes I can yes. rent a car and drive in London <laughs> yes well, definitely you can. I really, can, a road would, trip, you know, trip. if you choose five, six countries. Yeah. Yes. Do that. You know, I love traveling, so I really recommend you uh, to travel in Europe. And yes. uh, I will send you some tips for uh, countries I know. I if, know I, well. if I must. <laughs> I'll be all over that. Yes, I'd be in London as well, for sure, Emmett. That'd be so good. Tanya, you're doing great work. All the best for your studio. I know this is a tough time to open, but I hope that I hope all the best for you and that we see some workshops coming up and definitely be cheering you on as you continue to grow there. 
Thank you so much. Really, thanks a lot. I really enjoy it. And I hope uh, that you enjoy everything you have and, uh, and to get, you know, more pleasure and more trips after COVID. Yes. Coming to Europe with definitely. your family. Yes, yeah, so like a Super. Europe tour. Um, Emmett, thank you. Joel Crosby, thank you. I will reach out to Brenda. I'll send you the link actually for those the, those plotters after dark sessions that we did. They're really really interesting. Um, Super, yes. Yeah, and uh, Lisa. So yes. Yeah, so thank you to everyone who joined us today. And I wouldn't you. imagine, you know, when we started speaking. I mean, I would imagine that it would be super interesting, but that we covered so many topics. You know, within uh, I don't know, forty-five, fifty minutes. Yes. Amazing, yes. right? Right. Well, that's what I say. Good it's chemistry. Always... That's good. Good no communication. Doubt. Yes, and I would say it's a conversation, not an interview. When it just flows like that, it's so easy. It goes so fast. It really does. True. Mm -hmm. True. Awesome. Great. Okay, sign you off. Thank you again. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Martin. Bye. Bye. See you.